hello everyone welcome back to hotline topics it was just a while ago that i like him for your balamidi online wala dm3 took in another young lady as his wife in addition to his existing numerous wives and this is wife is 23 years old the alafi of your keeps his young wives around him as trophy wives his youngest wife now queen dam lola has been officially installed as the latest queen in the palace this is a double celebration for this queen this month the queen who celebrated her birthday on august 5th this year she also referred to the king the monarch of Oyo, as a mentor inspiration motivator and her husband. While she appreciated the king and his senior wives for their roles in making her feel comfortable in the palace. Also, Society Plus gathered that she was signing the wedding papers in a picture that went viral on social media, where the Reverend Monarch and Dam Lola could be seen signing some documents. So congratulations to the latest queen in the palace, Queen Damilola. Who is Queen Damilola? We do not have much information about this latest queen, other than her birthday, which is August 5th, and she's currently 23 years old. She's currently his youngest wife, and she has a son for the monarch. And she's also the youngest queen that gave birth to the monarch's son, and making the monarch a new father at the age of 81 years old. Who is the Alafi of Royal? Alafian Voyo is Lamidi Olaiwala at on that day yemi and is the present Alafian Voyo who was born on October 15 in 1938. He's the acclaimed leader of the traditional empire of Yoruba land. The old Oyo empire has been said to have existed without interruption for a period of about 600 years. In the olden days, the Alafian was an absolute ruler. Is also called by other names, which include Kabiyesi, the king who no one can question, Ikubabayeye, the one who can command death or pronounce sin upon his father or mother, or he who is parent to death. Alashe, he who wields authority, aka Jerisha, second in command to the gods. These are the names they were called. Lamidi Olaiwala Tonade Yemi III is the son of Obade Yemi II, the former Alafi of Oyo, who was deposed and sent into exile in the year. 1954 for having sympathy for the National Council of Nigerian Citizens. Oba Lamidi Adeyemi III had come into conflict with the then deputy leader of the Action Group. It was in the year 1971 that Lamidi Adeyemi succeeded Alaf in Badigeshin Ladibolu II. This happened shortly after the end of the Nigerian Civil War when Colonel Robert Adeyinka Adebayo was the governor. Then he was working as an insurance clerk. After all the intrigues, the president Alaf in Obala Midi Adeyemi Olai III emerged the Alaf in Voyo in 1970 and was crowned on the 14th of January 1971. He had married two of his wives, Alaja Oluri Abiba Adeyemi and Alaja Oluri Ramat Adedayo Adeyemi before his ascension to the throne. Some of his notable children are the late Alaja Kudurat, Barista Babatunde Adeyemi, Princess for Shade Arewa Moba, Princess Taibat Adeyemi, Prince Nuruddin Adeshogun Adeyemi, Prince Akim Adeniye Adeyemi, and Prince Adebayo Fatai Adeyemi, among others. The Alafi and Voyoba Adeyemi III is no doubt one of Africa's most powerful and most influential kings. Proud to becoming a king, he was an insurance officer. The contest to his emergence began in 1968 when he was invited along with 10 others from his ruling house to contest for the vacant stool of the Oyo Empire. As it was the custom of the land, there were three parameters with which they were judged. First was eligibility, second was popularity, and it was the stamina for the huge responsibilities of the office of the Alafi of Oyo. Obaola Iwola Atonda Deyemi emerged the first, defeating 10 other people after a vigorous screening exercise. However, due to what observers attested to be a political interference, the then government refused to endorse his appointment, saying that the procedure was not right. So the process started over again with the same results the second and the third time. At the end of it all, to the relief of many, Obade Yemi III was elected the winner and was finally chosen by the kingmakers on November 18, 1970 and then moved into the palace after completing the necessary rites under the tutelage of the Oye Messi. At an impressive ceremony at the Doba Stadium, Oyo Town, Obade Yemi III was presented with the staff of office as they are laughing for you in the presence of thousands of witnesses from all walks of life by the then military governor of the Western State, Colonel Narita General Adeyinka Adebayo. That was how his journey began, with a huge responsibility to protect, defend, project the cherished value of Yoruba customs and tradition, and if need be, to lay down his life defending those values. While well, fortunately, the need to lay down his life to defend Yoruba values never arose, hence he is now 81 years old.
The Alafi Envoyo was asked in an interview that if he had the chance to come back to this world, would he choose to be king again? Well, this was his response. In Yoruba land, there is no bigger achievement than becoming king. That is the highest position one can attain as a Yoruba man, regardless of profession. I believe that God always has a purpose for one's life. And there is nothing else I did rather do than what my capacity currently holds. As a Alafi, I'm in full service of my people every minute of the day. I have several rooms where I host different activities and attend to issues relating to the needs of my people. My experience on the throne has been very tasking. I have to settle disputes and know all the laws, even the modern laws. If I am to come again to the world, I would definitely like to come back as a king, he said. So what does he cherish the most about being the Alafi of Oyo? He enjoys the fact that he is keeping and upholding the covenant that he made during his installation as king. On how he thinks Nigeria can further develop, in his words, we all have a duty and a role to play, and that is what we are doing. It is one thing to give advice, and it is another thing to act. What do you do if your advice is not taken? From my throne, I have been able to contribute minimally, not as substantially as I would have liked. I have never allowed the capacity of the office I occupy to influence me adversely, nor have I abused my authority as king in any way that would be detrimental to the people I represent. Governance is very delicate, and it is easier to persuade government officials if they are educated. We can only give them advice. In football, 11 people go to represent a club or country, and the mistake of one person can ruin the entire match. It is just like that in governance. The error of a leader can ruin the entire country, he said. So which sports does he enjoy? He loves all sports, especially boxing. In his words, I played football very well. Back then, they used to call me local Stanley Matthew after the British footballer. Stanley Matthew, who played football till he was 50 years old. I don't support any football club because I would like to maintain my blood pressure and ensure that my emotion is in check. Supporting football teams affects people emotionally. Whenever Nigeria is playing, I support them, but I limit myself to that and wish other teams good luck. I'm also a good boxer. I've had about 56 bouts and lost two. In my bout, only 10 people who contested with me lasted the distance. I won the others by knockout, but I have never been knocked out. Let me tell you a little secret. Inwardly, I'm not a very happy person, so boxing is an interesting outlet for me. When you have a grudge, you don't feel pain, he said. Well, congratulations to the official Olori Damilola, who has been installed as the latest queen in the palace. We have come to the end of this episode. We hope you enjoyed it and listen to two new things. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for our daily content.